All right, good morning, Grace Baptist Church. Well, Chris Hannon, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Minutes, just simple minutes off I-95 South and North, exit 102, I think. And uh, we, uh, we don't call it Easter. It's like Resurrection Sunday for us. Uh, and I just entitled the message, The Resurrection of the Rabbit. <laughs> just the Resurrection of the Rabbit. <clears throat> I think that sparks interest when I put it like that. Uh, you know what I mean? Somebody says, The Resurrection of the Rabbit? What is this? Yeah, I'm talking about like Emma Foote used to say, that rascally rabbit. And um, what, what you have here is this right here. Uh, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, and this is the uh, 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 synopsis, so to speak, of the, the resurrection. It gives you an account. Matthew chapter 28, um, Matthew chapter 28, verse uh, 1. It says, uh, and in the end of the Sabbath, as uh, it began to dawn toward the... Uh, uh, the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, to see the uh, sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it, and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here. For he is risen, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you in the Galilee, there shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and joy, and did run uh, to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him, then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go uh, into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when uh, they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, that uh, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away, while he slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will secure you, uh, we will uh, persuade him and secure you. Basically, uh, they weren't supposed to let a prisoner escape because if the prisoner escaped, it was your life for that, the prisoner, uh, that escaped life, right? So he says, uh, we will secure you. So, verse 15, so they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying that's commonly reported among the Jews under this day, this saying is also reported among college professors. This is what they like to tell uh, a bunch of young Christians that come to colleges that it's just a fairy tale. His disciples stole him by night. They came up with this big old thing that he rose. And that's why, and they, they go on and on and on and on about it. And so uh, that's why, let me tell you something. Uh, these young Christians that are going to these secular colleges and even our, uh, you know, religious college, uh, they need to be equipped more than just, uh, what's the game that was a popular game, uh, Bible quiz game, what was that game called? Bible trivia. They need, let me tell you we need to raise them uh, up on more than trivia. Games and everything else, right? They need, to re they need to be seriously equipped when they go to these colleges and like it said over in Peter, be sanctified the Lord God in your heart, be ready, be ready. Always, always to give an answer uh, of reason to hope the lie within you, right? Uh, 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 what? No. Think about the Lord God in your heart, be ready always to give an answer to the lie within you with meekness and fear, right? They need, they need to have study, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study their Bible, amen, to answer these questions and give a good answer to this world. Because you know this world finds out, you know what? Uh, it's like that we have no, no real foundation of our faith. We do have a foundation of our faith, Amen. Uh, we do have we do have a standard of truth, but nobody seems to know it. Amen. amen. They know more about sitcoms. Amen. They know about sports heroes and the stats of their teams and this guy's stats and that guy's stats. There's more people watching the Masters. Yeah. I am, I'm surprised they ain't changed the name yet, but yeah, I guess because the black guy won it, so now we can keep it at the Masters, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got tigers. Oh, we got tigers keep going. We get the tiger say it's racist. We need to change the name. They're gonna change. Oh, they're gonna change it. You know, to the slaves. I don't. I don't know what they're gonna change it to. Uh, but uh, I just know that you know these young men and young women aren't equipped to go out in this world and this swamp. The devil walking by the roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And so they're getting devoured with secular reasoning and they can't fight them with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. They're not familiar with it and its doctrines. Right? So, uh, he says, this right here, he says, uh, verse, uh, um, verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee and to the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And that's found in John, and you know who that's, doubting Thomas. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them uh, to observe all things. So whatsoever I have commanded, that's part of what Brother Bright said. I mean, there's more too when you get saved. And now you start getting taught. Amen. Now you get start taught. You you become a Christian by faith in Jesus Christ because He's does He dies in your place. Amen. He pays your part. So there's redemption, there's reconciliation, amen. Right? There's restitution. There's all these things in Jesus Christ. Now you start learning to live the Christian life to glorify God. Teaching them, verse 20, to observe all things whatsoever I commend you, and lo, I'm with you all the way even unto the end. Of the world, so there's uh, uh, there's the the resurrection. There's a whole scenario right there. Now this evening, I want to go over the. Uh, I want to um, get all four of the books together again. Once again, I do this every now and then and show because you know there's a lot of people saying there's contradictions there because one says this, one says that. No, I'm gonna show you when you look at them all together how it's cohesive. Amen. There's no contradiction in the Word of God. The only contradiction is people's minds. Amen. Because they won't study it. And so, but uh, I want you to know there's no mention of bunnies, bonnets, boiled eggs. I, I, you know what? I've been eating. I'm back on my boiled egg diet, trying to lose a little weight. You know, you go home, you try to impress folks. And so, uh, I'm back on my boiled egg diet. You know, we, uh, I can't remember how many grams. Uh, one boiled egg. I eat two boiled eggs this morning. Uh, that's protein. Uh, 12 grams of pro, 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 per egg. Two eggs. two eggs, so I'm getting tw I'm getting twelve grams of protein, you know, without the fat and all this kind of stuff. Maybe the fat's pat, coming from two pieces. Of salt. <laughs> yeah, good fat. That's good fat. Good fat, right? Uh, but there's no mention of Easter trees, Easter lights, uh, sunrise services, baby chicks, baskets. Uh, Easter is actually it is a pagan celebration. And it has amalgamated itself into Christianity to such a degree that uh, the, uh, the, what the resurrection actually means has been lost through commercialism, uh, through the carnality of adding this thing. And we know this right here, that the Roman Catholic Church uh, is the culprit of uh, adding uh, uh, the, the, uh, the pagan holidays and Christianizing them, uh, but they still maintain the substance of those holidays. That's why we got chicks, rabbits and all this stuff because they're not found in the Bible. And uh, as I said uh, earlier, I, uh, I got online and I started looking for some of this stuff. And I, I was, again, you got you to gotta start really looking because they're changing this. And so you got to find one that you know is true according to past history that you read because current history seems to be changing and making it seem like it derived from Christianity when it did not derive from Christianity. All right? The resurrection is part of Christianity, but all the trimmings that have taken precedence today, that's not, that's not Christian. And the bad thing about it is if you say anything about it today, now you know what? You hate children and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? What's wrong with it? What's right with it? I tell you what's wrong with it is not scriptural. Amen. 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 Now, and so uh, I got several uh, pamphlets I read right here. Eastern uh, is not a mistranslation. I'm going to talk about, probably talk about that this evening. But about history of Easter, I read this, the holiday of Easter, much like, and I like this guy because uh, where he comes from, he says, holiday of Easter, much like Christmas, has no, uh, has, uh, 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 has roots, he said, in both Christian Christianity and in pagan culture, though it's mostly considered a religious holiday, many of our modern traditions hail from uh, Easter's pagan roots. That's the truth. And I'm glad he mentioned it. I wouldn't look for Christmas, but he said it right there because that's where it comes from. Uh, the origin of Christ, uh, uh, Easter. Easter actually originated as an ancient pagan celebration of the spring equinox. In Christianity, the day was dedicated to observing the resurrection of Jesus Christ, celebrated around the time of the Jewish Passover. However, with the spread of the gospel of Christ, early Christians who did not participate in Jewish customs eventually merged their, merged their observance with the pagan spring festival. That would be the Roman Catholic Church. That wouldn't be the real Christians. The real Christians did not do that. The real Christians were persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church because they wouldn't do it. 
So he says, uh, Pagan Spring Festival recognized Easter as a resurrection day. Modern Eastern traditions, Easter traditions, uh, we enjoy today come from blend of Christian themes and ancient paganism. Pagan, because I asked the guys at the, at the, where I work at, what is a bunny rabbit? Basket? I said, what does that have to do with the resurrection? You know, you know what answer I got? Crickets chirping. Because it doesn't, because it's not there. I said, how did it get, I said, how did it get associated with the resurrection? I said, most of y'all, y'all going to be involved in Easter egg uh, uh, hunts and sunrise service and all that other stuff uh, than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How did they get there? They was like, I don't know. <laughs> I said, you ought to know. You ought to, you ought to, uh, I said, they to worship God must worship in the spirit and in truth. I said, if it's not in the Bible, you ought to be wondering why it's not in there. So he says, um, uh, 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 so Easter traditions we enjoy today come from a blend of Christian theme uh, and ancient pagan celebrations, though we tend to see more of the latter. You're talking about the, uh, uh, the pagan celebration. Easter decorations such as eggs, bunnies, sweets are all pagan trappings. Uh, East, Easter eggs. One of the most recognizable symbols associated with Easter is the Easter egg. This symbol can be traced back to ancient Babylonians who believed an egg fell from heaven into the Euphrates River and hatched the goddess of fertility, Ashtar, or known as Ashtar, uh, Ishtar, and yes, Easter. So each region named her something a little different, but it was all the same. Uh, pagans exchanged eggs as gifts during their springtime festival. That's where it came from. This is where we get it from. He says, uh, today eggs are painted in bright colors and used in uh, ever popular Easter egg hunt where they are hidden from children to find and collect. Except this year. Eggs are so high, y'all know folks have... <laughs> Y'all realize that, don't you? Y'all ever heard that? Eggs got it done so high, y'all know what they sub. Can you imagine? They substitute the eggs. Potatoes. <laughs> potato hunt. <laughs> I guess they're coloring the potatoes, I guess. I, I don't know. They said, man, we can't be wasting these eggs like this. Y'all, is eggs high enough? Yes, yeah, sir. Huh? Yeah, I was a wild man. man. Easter bunny, uh, uh, another widely popular Easter staple is the Easter bunny. Rabbits, much like eggs, have long represented the spring season and fertility. The uh, Easter rabbit is a tradition uh, that or originated in the pagan festival of E-O-S-T-R-E, -E, however it's pronounced, represented by the northern goddess who was associated with a rabbit and hare. The modern Easter bunny brings uh, eggs and treats for children to enjoy every Easter. All right, and so that's where it came from. It came from out of paganism. That's why it, it doesn't make sense associated with the resurrection. It's not mentioned because that's not part of it. Uh, the white lily. The white lily is so connected with the uh, is so connected with the holiday that it is sometimes known as the Easter lily. Lilies are associated with purity and resurrection. One legend says lilies grew in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Christ prayed uh, the night before his death. Other flowers associated with spring and Easter include the daffodils, the crocus, C R O C U S. Uh, uh, Hyacinthus, huh? Hyacinth. Hyacinth, and the tulips. Other symbols, other symbols for the Easter holiday uh, uh, season could cross fixes a direct connection to the religious teaching. Chickens, chicks, a spring uh, message of rebirth, and palm branches, which are significant uh, for both spring and Christianity. Like Christmas, Easter is a, a great occasion for decoration of your home and sharing meal with your uh, close friends and family. All right? Uh, but uh, the, that's the truth of it is, it is based in origins in paganism. And because it has, so that's why uh, you can, that's why lost people, people that normally won't have nothing to do with Christianity, will celebrate Easter punts, Easter baskets, bonnets, and everything else, right? That's why they'll do it. They won't have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They'll deny the truth of the Bible, the resurrection, and everything else, but they will do that. And the reason why they will do that is because it is pagan. Amen? That's why, that's why they'll do it. Right? Same thing with Christmas. The same thing with Christmas. They'll, they'll have a tree. They'll do all that because 
They will have nothing to do with Jesus Christ and, uh, uh, and the truth of Christianity, but they will do that stuff. Why? Because its origins is in paganism. It got associated with Christianity later on. But its origins are in paganism. And if they're, let me tell you something, when you're lost, you're a pagan. Yep. Amen. Yep. And that's easy to do. Amen. It comes natural. That's why they'll do it. I did it. When I was lost, I did it. Right? And so, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That's why I entitled the resurrection of the rabbit. Because the Bible emphasizes the truth of the resurrection. Amen? Uh, and uh, as always, uh, previous said this right, without the resurrection, we as Christians have absolutely nothing. All that we believe hinges on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Everything we believe, heaven and hell, right? Uh, 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 the prophets, everything that was said, pinned down, it all hinges on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I, we sang a song, I serve a risen Savior. Amen? Amen? A dead man can't do anything for you. Amen? He has to have resurrection. The resurrection, it proves so many things. It proves uh, everything that Jesus Christ said is true. He resurrected. Amen? He even told about his death and that I was going to rise. He even says, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 as Jonah was in the whale's belly three days, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He said, even so. And so, if the resurrection is not true, and Paul goes, that's why I like going, because Paul goes a detail, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 gives you a detail, a thing on the resurrection, and what it, if, we, if it's not true, amen, and then shows you through illustration that it is true, Amen. amen. And that's why I always like going over because most people, you know what? I, I hate to say that professing uh, Christian haven't even read their Bible. And the resurrection is one of them. And, and uh, we're at such a place now that some people even say, well, uh, is there actually a need uh, for us to believe the resurrection in order to be a Christian? For somebody to even uh, uh, propose that question shows you they don't understand the importance of the resurrection. It'd be like somebody coming up to you and saying, I'm looking at the heart and we've been starting to mapping the human genome and everything else and all this kind of stuff. And we've, there's a question where I, we actually need a heart. <laughs> <laughs> and people would say, you need to go back and study the heart, friend. <laughs> right? That's what they would say because, because uh, that's okay. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know did, where'd you get your grant from? <laughs> Who gave you that money? Wasted. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look what he says. Verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which I'll show you receive wherein you stand, by which I'll see you saved. Amen. So we get saved by believing the gospel. Amen. What is that gospel? That's why here's a, if, if anybody asks you what's the gospel, here's the simplest, most concise definition of what the gospel is that we believe that saves us. He says, uh, but which also you say, verse 2, if he can remember what I preached uh, preach unto you, unless he believed in vain, that means you don't believe it fully. That's what in vain means. You know what? You don't embrace it. You don't trust it. You hear it, but you don't, you don't believe it. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13 gives you uh, uh, that illustration of how many people will receive it in such a way, but you know what? Not bear fruit. Amen? Because it, it doesn't get down to the right place. Notice he says, uh, verse 1, he says, verse 3, brother, if I did unto you first of all that which I also received, how Christ died for our, here's the gospel, now died for our sins according to the what? Scriptures, all right, that's the foundation. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the what? Scriptures, there's the gospel. That's what we believe, amen? amen. That's what we believe. There's, there it is right there. He said, now watch this. And verse 5, and that he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, to whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James and of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also uh, as one born out of due time. That's Acts chapter 9 on the road to Damascus. Amen. And he says, uh, uh, for, I, uh, for I am the least of the apostles, that I am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God I am, uh, I am what I am. And it's grace which was bestowed on me. Uh, you know what? Every Christian ought to be able to say that. Amen. By the grace of God I am what I am. He says, uh, he says, bestowed upon me uh, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it, uh, uh, therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so ye believe. Now, uh, now, 
He gets into the three aspects of this about the resurrection, which are really important. First, he deals with the critics of the resurrection. Because there are critics of the resurrection. And he deals with the critics of the resurrection and shows, and he, I always like this argument because he shows how, all right, y'all say there's no resurrection. Let's just take that thought and run with it. Let's just run it off. Y'all know people do stuff and you know what? They don't even think it through. They say things and they don't think it through before they open their mouth. Uh, we used to say this in, uh, in the Marine Corps, engage your brain housing group before you open your pie hole. Your pie hole is your mouth. That's where you put pie. <laughs> but engage your, gray, uh, your, uh, your uh, brain housing group. Everything is, you know, have this, this military thing to it. Uh, when you were in school, your teacher used to say this. All right, let's everybody put their what? Thinking caps on. You ever been in the school? We already did that. We always sit there, you know, put to do like that every day. Let's put them on snug and tight. Some of y'all have chin straps and we be all, no? Y'all missed out. Y'all didn't go to good schools. Uh, <laughs> all right? So we be in there putting our thinking caps on. And that's what he's asking. He's saying, think about this thing. Think it through. Here's the critics of the rest. Look what he says, verse 12. He says, now, if Christ be a priest that he rose from the dead, and how say some, now watch this, notice where they're at. He says, some among you. So they're among the Corinthians. You see this? That means they're in the church. They're fellowshipping. Do y'all see that? Watch what he says. He said, A son among you, there is no resurrection of the dead, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, uh, Christ is not risen, and if Christ be not risen, our preaching is vain, and your faith is vain, yea, you have found uh, false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, uh, if so be that the dead rise not. Look at this. He says, uh, um, for, it, uh, for, for if the dead rise not, then is Christ not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. You can, I can almost a certain po folks didn't think about that going that far. He said, verse 18, then, look at this. Then also they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all men most miserable. You know, simply saying that was it. That's our best shot. And if Christ is not raised, you know what? We're in trouble. And so, know some things. First of all, uh, uh, go back to verse 14. Look what he says. He says, uh, 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 if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is, is vain. Preaching about, uh, you think about it, all the years that you done went to church. And I always think about all the, all the messages. Uh, uh, Brother Mike said this right here. Uh, I, uh, it's actually been 27 years. 27 years in the ministry, going on 28 started in 1996. 27 going on 28. And all the messages and all the time y'all set through the messages. <laughs> so much so that my brother said one time, y'all remember what he said? He said, the Bible says, let my people go. <laughs> remember that? And I told y'all, remember I told y'all, I said, there is a fine line between a, a, a long service and a hostage situation. <laughs> but I said, how vain is it? This is, he's giving you an argument. If Christ is not risen, he said our preaching is vain. You see that? Preaching, well, you know, we're preaching about a dead person, right? And if he didn't rise, you know what? He can't help you rise. We sing a song, we shall rise. So if he's dead, we shall not rise. Watch this, look at verse 15. <clears throat> He said, yea, we have found false witnesses of God because we testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that, no, we don't. We're lying. We're lying. We're lying about God. Right? Just as much as, just as bad as a lie, some guy comes up to you and tells you, God told you to give me this money. We would say you're lying. And what makes it bad is you're lying on God. Well, if there's no resurrection, you know what? We're lying and saying God raised this guy up and he didn't raise him up. That's a lie. A lie is a lie. And last time I checked, all lies had their part in the lake of fire, which burned in fire and brimstone. Now, in that, look at verse 18. I, I like the way Paul, he just builds on this thing. Look at verse 18. Or look at verse uh, 16. Uh, verse 16, uh, verse 17. He says, uh, um, and if Christ be not raised from your, uh, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. Do you see that? Now, I don't know about you, but you know what? Don't fight when somebody come up and say, your faith is vain. You ever, you, ever, you ever told somebody that their faith was vain? What they want to do? 
They want to do bodily harm. They want to get physical. We ain't even had the guts to go on and tell them, you, you, <laughs> you yet in your sins because we know that to push them over the edge. <laughs> They're just losing. <laughs> but here's what he's saying. Listen, the, the, this is what he's trying to show you. If there is no resurrection, then you know what? You're, you're questioning whether or not the need of it. And he's saying, let me tell you something. If there ain't one, let me tell you something. Your faith is vain and you are yet in your sins. All this busy, like Brother Mike said this morning, oh man, a weight fell off my shoulder. That's just your imagination. I felt a peace come up. You know, you didn't. You're yet in your sins. If there's, notice, all this is hooked to the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Look at how he builds more. Then, look at verse 70. Then. Just keep building. Then also, uh, they also which are fallen in street, uh, 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 sleep in Christ are perished. He ain't talking about they just died. He talking about they per John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, uh, they gave his only begotten son that whoso believed should not what? Not die, but what? Perish. That means the loss of their soul. He's trying to get you to think sober about this thing. If there's no resurrection, your grandma, all the you know, all these great saints of old, all the people listed in Hebrews chapter eleven and all, and he said they have perished. Why? Because they died in their sins. If there's no resurrection, Jesus said, "If you die in your sin, where do I go? You cannot come." Right? Look how he builds on this. So your loved ones, your grandma, your parents. They all went to hell. Look at verse 19. If Christ is our only hope, if we give up everything, if we give it up everything and we missed it all, and we let life pass us by, we are most miserable. Amen? Because now we in our 60s, almost 70s, and buddy, it's, let me tell some, I, I don't care, I don't care, let me tell some, I don't count. I don't care if you take uh, green this and green that, Drink this or drink that. Put this cream on and sleep on this this feathery pillow and all this kind of it ain't uh, you, uh, you want? Uh, I feel like this come uh, this stuff. This guy, I, uh, man, seventy. I feel like I'm in my twenties again. Quit lying. <laughs> I don't even remember. My mother was coming to church this morning. I said, "When do we quit having vehicle problems and we start getting some stability?" She said, "Around when we." I said, "When we get that van?" She said, "2009." And I said, "It was a 2006." I said, "I was 47." I said, "Let me go back to 47." I said, "I don't want to go back to 20." <laughs> but what I'm saying is this right here. Uh, it, it shows you the, the. It just shows you the seriousness of. There is no, and he's answering critics. Y'all say there's no resurrection. Well, let's look at no resurrection. And it's amazing, you know why? Because it's like they want to believe in Jesus, but they don't want to believe in a resurrection. That's, let me tell you something, that's too, that's too much, so to speak. Well, I'm going to talk about, you know, what God does to show the proof of resurrection. You know what I know is this, right? All the Hollywood stars, they resurrect. They get to resurrect in all their movies. Right? I remember this not too long ago. Uh, they made a they made a ton of money. Superman dies. Y'all 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 heard about that? Superman died. Right? The the Krypton, Kryptonian monster got him and stabbed him, put a hole through his whole body and all this kind of stuff. Just, the light went out. Of Superman he just died. Whole world, man. Superman died. Y'all know what they did? They resurrected Superman. Superman come back mad. Look at Batman and said, "You kill me." <laughs> But y'all ever notice all the heroes, nobody dies. And, and in the movies, they, uh, you know, Hollywood can do it. But God can't do it. He just showed you this right. Let me tell you, let me give you this. If Christ didn't rise, Stephen didn't see him as he was dying. The apostles didn't see him. Uh, Paul didn't see him. Right? Uh, the picture of baptism. What's the picture of baptism? It's a picture of dying to ourselves and rising of newness of life. That's all wasted if Christ did not rise. Amen? And if he didn't rise, you won't see him. Amen? You won't see any loved one, son, daughter, parent, friend. You won't see them. 
because they're not risen, risen if Christ, they won't, uh, they're not risen if Christ did not die. Do you understand? He gives the soberness of this, the seriousness of it, if Christ did not die. Amen? Go like this. I'm so glad. Look at verse 20 through, tw verse 20 through 28. He says, but now is Christ risen from the dead. Amen. Amen. That's why the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Christ is the Son of God. Amen. That's why the resurrection is part of what we, what we trust in, what we believe. Amen. Yes, sir. That's faith. And so Paul goes from the critics of the resurrection as he answers them and brings it all the way out to show them the reality of there is no resurrection. And then he brings forth the certainty of the resurrection. Uh, look at verse 20. He says, but now is Christ risen from the dead. And watch this now. And become the first fruits of them that slept. You know that? The season. Notice he uses that, that term, first fruits. Amen. If you ever grown any uh, garden or uh, things on a tree, you know what grows first? The first fruits. Amen. You know where they come from? Uh, after a, a tree or the ground or everything else looks all dead and it's not going to bear no fruit, lo and behold, you know what? They resurrect. That's why I always tell my, my wife had this, some of the plants, brings them home, and she resurrects them. They'll be dead. They'll be DOA out here sitting in front of this church and she gets them home and I call them out and say, you got some more zombie plants. Things never die. Next thing you know, the whole front porch is covered with plants and, and lizards. You know, and they, you know, have a little, little, little one lizard, and they do that little throat thing. <laughs> I say, I see you, I see you. And she's like, oh, of course, I have to grab them. You ever grab them? She goes, don't hurt her. I grab them, bro. You ever see a little heart? The little heart is beating and everything else, and they're, they're breathing so hard, the whole, you ever watch them? They're breathing so hard, I grab them, and they just start closing their eyes and they go from green to, to gray. You ever seen them? And then they just kind of, and then I let them go. Then they're like, <laughs> they run off. Yes, sir. The certainty of the resurrection. The season points to the resurrection, right? You see the plants, you see the flowers, flowers you know what? That flower bed, and I lost my bed because uh, there ain't no flowers out there. But <laughs> they're going to be there next week. Uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, I told y'all before, uh, before we, when we did that last week, uh, last year, I said, all right, now this is it. I said, they, they ain't coming back no more. Guess where they're at? They're right out there, aren't they? Amen? So the season points to the resurrection. Amen. Uh, the Savior points to the resurrection. Look at verse 21. For since, watch this, for since uh, by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, after word, after word, they that are Christ as his coming. Go, uh, at his coming. Go to Romans chapter 5. Okay, we're going to come back here. Go to Romans chapter 5. See, the Bible gives you the certainty of the resurrection. And it gives you things, uh, 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 the natural world, where we can point to these things and, and look at them. Look what he says. Romans chapter 5. Look at this, Romans chapter 5. Here it is, Romans chapter 5. He says, verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if though the, the, through the offense of one, that would be Adam, many are uh, be dead, even much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as, as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, uh, uh, by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign uh, in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore as the, uh, by the offense of one judgment came unto all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by, uh, so by the obedience of one many should be made righteous. Moreover the law entered uh, that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound and as sin hath reigned unto death even and so might uh, grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why Jesus Christ said, you know, I come to give him life and give it to him what? Abundantly. Amen. You know what man's still, you know what man's trying to man. That's why, that's why people spend so much money and time, even personal trainers, you know what they want? Life. 
trying to extend this thing called life. Amen. Trying to be young, trying to look young, you know what I mean? And, and taking all these medicines and, and jogging and, and, and not eating certain things and all that so, so that you can appear young. Life. Life. Right? Certainly of the resurrection. Go to watch this. Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. The Bible gives you the certainty of the resurrection. Amen? John chapter 5. Look at verse 21. John 5 and 21. John 5 verse 21 says this. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. You know what that means? Made alive. For as the Father judgeth, no man hath committed uh, all judgment unto the Son, uh, uh, that all men should honor the Son, as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father which hath sent him. I don't know why Jehovah's Witnesses can't get that. Let me I send you, he that hear my word and believe on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. You see that? Watch this now. But it's passed from death unto what? Life. That's resurrection. He says, Very, very, I say unto you, uh, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they, shall, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment uh, also because he's the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and, the, uh, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, life, and they have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. Amen. You know what? The resurrection proves that everybody, good and bad, are coming up. Amen. Amen. Look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Paul talks the certainty of the resurrection. John chapter 11. Look at John chapter 11. Look at verse 25. John 11 verse 25. Jesus said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? The seasons point to the resurrection. The Savior points to the resurrection. And I quoted that verse earlier, uh, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40. Uh, Jesus Christ said, as, as uh, Jonah was three days and three nights in the hearts of the belly, uh, uh, even though so the Son of Man must be three days and three nights of the, uh, the heart. You know what he said? He said, that's the only sign that was going to be given to the Jews. Amen. You know the only sign he said it was going to be given to them? The only sign that was going to be given to them? The resurrection. Amen. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. The certainty of the resurrection. Acts chapter 17. Look at what Paul says about it here. Acts chapter 17. See, the Savior points to it. The Scriptures point to it. Acts chapter 17. Look at this. Look what Paul says. Watch what he says. He gives them the gospel. Verse 30, and at times of this ignorance, God winked at. Look at this. God winked at. He said, But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the what? The dead. There's the resurrection. Now watch this. Verse 32. Uh, of all the things that he said there, from beginning at verse 22, I want you to notice what they picked up on. Look at verse 32. And when they heard of the what? Resurrection. The resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among. Notice all those things that they, they could have picked up on, what did they? The resurrection. Amen. But he said he given an assurance unto all men that he raised him from the what? from the dead. Amen. Uh, go to Revelation chapter 20. Go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. Revelation chapter 20 verse 6. Revelation 20 verse 6. Revelation 20 verse 6. It says this. It says, Blessed are and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Amen. See, the resurrection is a blessing for those that believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's our hope. 
our salvation hinges on this thing called the resurrection. All right? I'll come back to our text. Come back to our text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And this is what I really like. Now, now in, in today's society, Paul, Paul is he's, he's, he's a bad person. He says bad things about people because <laughs> he uses this phrase. But uh, we know what he's talking about. Uh, uh, he's not using it uh, in a uh, pejorative way. He's using it in just a way to show that you haven't thought this thing through. Because look what he says. Uh, and he, he's, he's uh, you know, like a lost man would say. Look what, look what he says here. He says, uh, well, let me, let, me, let me read down here because we were, were in either, certainly of the resurrection. He says, uh, verse 23, But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward they the Christ that is coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, and shall have put down all rule and all authority uh, and power. For he must reign till he hath put down all enemies under his feet. Uh, the last enemy shall be destroyed is death, for he, hath, uh, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith, all things are put under him, it is manifest that uh, he is accepted which did put all things under him and when, and when all things uh, shall be subdued unto him then shall the son himself be subject unto him to put all things under him that God may be all in all amen uh, then he goes elsewhere or uh, else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all why are they baptized for the dead and the Mormons come up with this whole big scenario on why you got to get baptized for the dead and everything else when well, he's not talking about that at all but watch this. Look at verse 35 for a second time. And he talks about the character of the resurrection. And I always like when he said this right here because y'all know, y'all know, y'all know there's always somebody in the crowd. It's like having a big meeting and everybody's ready to go. Uh, they don't, uh, lunchtime and everybody's hungry and all this kind of stuff. And this is the guy and he's going to ask this question and he thinks he's got a smart question to kind of stump the moderator or stump the panel and everything else. And he raises his hand and we all go, Oh, man, what, what is the question? Look at verse 35. But some man will say, can't y'all see him raising his hand? How are, the, uh, 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 how are the dead raised and which what body do they come? And we're like, what? <laughs> That's your question? <laughs> Little Paul says, thou fool. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like this is like uh, yeah, agriculture 101. <laughs> you should know better than this. Thou fool. So it gets into the character of the resurrection. Amen? The character of the resurrection. Look what he says. Thou fool. He says, uh, 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 verse 36, thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quicken except it what? Die. die. First, they got to die. Y'all know. He's, first, there's the reality. You got to put a dry, dead seed in the ground. It can't be wet anymore. It got to be dry and dead. Nope. Verse 37. And that one, now here's the you know, That was thou sowest. Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain or some chance, some other wheat or other grain. He said, Come on, man. You know, it ain't the same thing that you put down in the ground. That's why he said, Thou fool. <laughs> He said, but God gives it the body as it had pleased him unto every seed his own body. You don't put a piece of little a piece of corn in the ground and one giant, you know, huge a kernel of corn come up and we say, wow, this is this is corn. No, it starts out a little it always starts out two little leaves. That's amazing. Every last one of them is talking about two little leaves. Then they start branching off and everything else. And then comes a bug. And then comes not one thing of corn, but a whole, a whole uh, what do you call it, an uh, uh, ear of corn. And on that stalk is all these ears of corn. And the, the uh, what's that silver stuff that's hanging out of them? The silk and all this kind of stuff, right? That's why he says, thou fool. You know, you didn't, that's not, the, that's not how it works. And you ask, how do they come? How, uh, here's the question. Uh, um, how are, they, how are the, the dead raised up and what body do they come? Like, that's a mystery. God's like, look out the window, man. <laughs> God giving him the body as he had pleased him in every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another, uh, another of birds. Uh, right? He's giving a practical illustration of the resurrection. 
He says, uh, uh, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differ from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. See how he ties that thing all together? So also is the resurrection of death. It is sown in corruption, death. It is raised in, is raised in incorruption, life. Right? It's sown dead, see, raised, what it's bringing forth, life. He says, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in potty, uh, a power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Amen. Showing you the character of the resurrection. And you can see the reality when you just look at what God has created so you can understand the truth of what he's saying. And so it is written, the first ant man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, uh, second man is the Lord from heaven. And as the earth, uh, and as the earthy, such as are they also that are earthy? And as the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly? And as we have borne the image of the earth, you know what we got right now? Our earthly bodies. Amen. It's decaying. Amen. It's waxing old. Amen? I don't care what you put on it. Underneath. <laughs> underneath all the makeup. It's still waxing old. Amen? It's decaying. It's dying. You know what that stiffness is? That's rigor mortis. It's, just a, it's not in its full bloom yet. It's just little by little. He says. <laughs> now watch this. Because he's talking you the character, terrestrial, celestial, corruption, incorruption, dishonor, glory, weakness, power, natural, spiritual, earthly, heavenly. Amen? Amen. It's the character of the resurrection he's showing you. What does it look like? People want to ask, what does it look like? Look out the window. Amen. You critics of it. Look out the window. Look at this. Verse 49, as we are born the image of the earthly, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? what? Changed. Amen. Somewhere between that seed going in the ground dead and pop it up, there's a change. It's like the butterfly. Going in that little cocoon. He goes in there, he's a little worm, right? He eats leaves, his whole perception is crawling around on the ground and everything else and all that stuff. And he sees that tree, and that tree's like a mile away. In reality, it's five feet. <laughs> and he got to get over branches and all this kind of stuff. He finally gets up there, right, and finds this is, this is the one to do it. G grabs on, hangs upside down, starts spinning this cocoon right, ar right around him, right? Stays in that thing completely encapsulated. So many days, 8 or 60 days or 30 days, whatever it is, and all of a sudden he comes out. Changed. Completely. His whole, I'm talking about his whole being, is his whole perception about life. Now watch this. Where he crawled on the ground, he's flying. What would take out what was an arduous journey now is just, journey is now is just a glide. Seconds. He's eating different. The whole mechanism of eating and what he eats is different. How he sees his senses, everything is different. Amen? That's why he's giving you that illustration. That's why somebody said one time, I believe heaven's going to be full of butterflies. And I said, you know what? I don't have a scripture for it, but I said, that wouldn't be bad. Behold, I show you a mystery, verse 51. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Do you see that? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Somebody said, the only time you're going to change a man is when he's a baby. You better let God change his heart first before you marry him. 
For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Amen. Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, because we have victory, y'all realize they said we are starting the battle from the victorious stage. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable, always about in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen? Now, my brethren, listen to me, listen to me. This is way too much, too important to be covered up by bunnies and baskets. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is way too important to, uh, you say, well, you know, there's their kids, and I understand the children, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, but we have still been given a, a mandate by the Lord, bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Yep. Amen? Amen. Not, in the, not in the lies of paganism. I know they're children, and I, you know, I know they're just, and I know they're just, you know, they say, well, later on, when they, when, later on, we'll introduce the truth. I think Jesus Christ, he said, except you uh, humble yourself like a little child, amen? I think my Bible said uh, about Timothy, from a child, from a child, thou hast understood the, the holy scriptures were able to make thee what? Wise unto what? Salvation. I think, I think, you know what, children can, uh, let me tell you something, our children are having to deal with serious stuff. Yes. Amen? Little children are having to deal with serious, school shootings. Yes. Amen? Yes. Serious stuff, school shoot. what to do, what, what to do when a shooter comes in the classroom? We shake our hand, we say the little child shouldn't even have to deal with it, but that's the reality they're having to deal with. What to do, what to do if uh, you are abducted by a predator. Well, you don't think we're having this conversation? What to do so you won't be abducted by a predator? Children having these serious conversations. What to do if a relative touches you inappropriate? You don't think we're having these conversations? Is that serious or not? You're five, six years old. I'm just worried about whether or not mama put, you know, the, the green, whether or not I got the, 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 uh, the, the green uh, 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 candy versus the blue candy at six years old. What about whether or not I'm making home quick enough to watch Monster Week? Godzilla gonna eat up Japan again. <laughs> but no, I can't, no, I'm six years old. I don't worry about these serious, sober, dead, things that will take my life. But this would be too serious for them. No, this is truth. And this truth right here shouldn't be overshadowed with bunnies and baskets and baby chicks and a new suit of clothes. Amen? They should grow up. You tell me why? They should grow up understanding they have a soul for whom Christ died. Amen? And there is resurrection, resurrection, and it means there's going to be accountability. Amen. Amen. But it means there's hope beyond this world where we're seeing all this serious stuff. Amen. The resurrection. Amen. So this morning, is you either have the resurrection and understand the truth and the importance of it, or you have the rabbit. And he can't, he can't do nothing for you. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We be See, there's a crowning after the resurrection. Amen.